Yesterday, Sledgehammer gave us their weekly update for Call of Duty World War II of the week before and some info on things to look out for, and this one's actually pretty good. While we may not have much listed to us that we didn't see a bit of already, we got a lot of clarification on other things as well as a sneak peek at a few things that we'll be getting, and we'll be discussing all that here in today's video. So, that said, let's just jump right into it. Firstly, I gotta say it's actually kind of crazy to see the first thing listed in this update was a shout out to the stream that Sledgehammer and I teamed up for this week, and I gotta say it was an incredibly cool and awesome experience. I gotta thank the whole team at Sledge once again for the incredible hospitality, felt just like home. It was honestly one of the most fun things that I think I've done on this whole YouTube journey, and if any of you guys tuned into that stream either on Twitch, where we actually haven't used Twitch in ages, but we broke personal records by far on that, or if you watch it here on YouTube, then thank you guys as well for the support during all of it also. I know myself and the team over there were really excited to share everything with you guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that stream and have enjoyed the event thus far, but enough blabbering on about it, it was kind of cool to see that little shout out during this update for this, but firstly, in terms of content-wise, the blog opens up with a brief recap of everything that came in the event so far. So new content, new weapons, gross and house, a new HQ, infected, and more things coming in the future, talking a little bit about that. Those modes being a horde point and relic of the undead, which we'll elaborate on in just a little bit here, but next up was the mention of the Weekend Warfare playlist, which is now live in World War II and goes for the next couple of days until 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time on Monday, and this initially was double XP, double division XP, and double weapon XP for infected, but since your division doesn't change and you only have the weapons of the Type 100, the combat shotgun, and the fire axe in the entirety of the game mode, it was kind of weird to see that we had double weapon XP and double division XP, but that's actually since been adjusted as a result because we now only get double XP in infected, but we also get that triple double that was promised already in a gross and house playlist in which it's a mosh pit of various different modes on the new map that everyone has access to. So whichever one you jump in and play, it's of course a lot of fun and a great way to rank up. If you guys are going for completionist challenges, I actually just completed my two times heroic weapon bribe, completing the 100 matches. I did that with ease throughout the last Last couple of days with infected. I think before we ended up getting infected, go live both at the event and then I took a couple of days off because I was with family out in California. But then when I came back, I think I completed about maybe 40 matches or so, like the snap of a finger essentially, because it is something that relatively lasts only like two and a half minutes or so for each match. So you can end up doing these rapid fire real quick if you have those. But Gross and House is still a lot of fun as well. If you guys like high action, super fun and fast paced gameplay, then these both are great for you. And of course, great way to rank up with those double. Double XP multipliers on it. But that second playlist of Grossen House is again live until Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time as well. It's also something that again adds a little bit more variety. If you don't want to play just infected, you can play a little bit of a moss pit as well here with that one. So I think it's awesome that we get more than we initially anticipated, but regardless, jump on, take advantage of that, and play around a little bit with it. Next up, they've reiterated a little bit about this week's weapon contract, which continues the trend that we've seen as of recently with the Blitzkrieg items. This one being the M2 Carbine or M2 Carbine that again is personally one that I think you guys should go for. I'm definitely going to be going for it now that I can sit back down at my PS4 here at home and then grind out a little bit of the game. This is the only weapon out of the Blitzkrieg items that I don't have, so definitely I'm looking forward to this one. But again, if you don't, it's worth picking up. It's something that is a decent weapon from a little bit of experience with it from picking it up in mid-game. But it's pretty solid, definitely worth checking it out if you guys have not done so already. And this one is actually relatively simple, especially compared to some of the other ones we've seen. They're always normally simple, but this one's only 30 kills while aiming down sight with any weapon and in an hour's time for 5,000 armory credits. So if you want to spend the credits on it, it's almost close to guaranteed that you'll get that DLC weapon for free out of this. Or free as in you don't have to test any luck with the RNG, but you know what I mean. After that, we actually get a lot of stuff to talk about with the next portion because this is a little bit of a change to the community challenge within the Attack of the Undead event. So as we know, we did get a new community challenge with the Attack of the Undead event. We saw that whenever it went live on Tuesday, but whenever we got got that, the initial details that we had where there'd be five tiers to everything, in which we knew a little bit about those rewards. So, of that, we ended up seeing that we initially were going to get a calling card, a weapon charm, the Tesla gun, a special helmet, and a weapon charm emblematic, or a way to make our emblems actual weapon charms that we ourselves can don on our weapons. Now, that's something we knew of, once again, from that trailer, but we actually got a little bit more clarity on this, and actually some other rewards are thrown in here as well, that we are finally made aware of with this update to Call of Duty World War II that Sledgehammer gave us yesterday. So that said, while we break this down, we're going to see a little bit of a few side notes for these, a caveat in one and other level rewards that once again, were not immediately depicted. So let's just jump into it. Firstly, we will see, of course, that we get all things that were listed that once again, being the calling card, weapon, 
Charm Tesla Gun Special Helmet and the Weapon Charm Emblematic. But on top of the calling card, the first tier will also get a zombie supply drop, which if you guys have not logged into Call of Duty World War II today, you should have already gotten that because this first tier was already completed. You should have that zombie supply drop and you should also have that calling card as well. Then the second tier will end up giving us a weapon charm, but that will also then give us a rare zombie supply drop on the flip side. So that's something that again, two supply drops for those first two tiers as a secondary reward. But then the third tier is where it starts to get a little bit different. Not only does it give us the Tesla gun, which we'll discuss a little bit further, that does have a little caveat with it, but the secondary reward for this tier is also a zombie's weapon camo. And along with that, we'll also see that both in tier four and five, another zombie's camo is given for the completion of each of those subsequent tiers being reached. So we'll, if completed out of this event, come out with a few different rewards, 10 in total. And again, I'm happy about three camos. That to me is actually really cool. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting though, because we haven't seen any super insane camos in multiplayer for World War II, but I'm curious if this will be the beginning of it, because we do see that they are labeled as zombie weapon camos, which does mean that we may very well see these actually be just for zombies, but the different schisms in the camos in the game overall, and not just a direct one-to-one -one where you can transfer, say, chrome over to zombies and Geitscraft to MP, I'm hoping that this might be a little bit of a way to bridge the gap, but again, I'm not entirely sure. But recently, a Twitter user, and I hope I don't butcher this, Tooks19, actually ended up seeing this glitch up on his weapon camo to which he shared a clip of it popping up and then inspecting it on shipment. This was one of the brand new camos that actually was shared by Sledgehammer in particular, so it is one of those ones that's in the game. So it is something that looks absolutely awesome. I think it looks really cool in MP, but here's my thoughts. Maybe we end up seeing this be the first introduction of flashy camos into multiplayer, which I'd personally love, but I have absolutely no clue if that will, or it might be a texture glitch in which we still see the camos separated by modes, and it's just sheer dumb luck the game would deal this sort of glitch out in the middle of a match. Like I said, I'm hoping that we end up seeing this happen, but that's just me and I don't know if I necessarily will fully believe that it will happen. I still think that it's probably like an 80 to 20% chance that it will not, simply because they did say it's a zombies portion of it and there's actual rewards for zombies so that it doesn't necessarily neglect the zombies portion in the zombies community while everybody else in MP ends up getting rewards as well. So I guess we'll see in time, but I think that it will be something that is zombies be specific once again, but they just they look so cool, man. Please, I'd love to see them in MP. But rewards list aside, let's come back to that Tesla gun caveat that we mentioned a little bit earlier. So my immediate question to whenever I talked to Sledgehammer about this was how would the Tesla gun work in MP to begin with? Well, that's finally detailed now because with this little clarification of an update, we ended up seeing that this third tier of the challenge is gonna be something that is kind of limited time. But this isn't also going to be something that shows up in your mail as other rewards would and is something you can equip for every single match in MP or anything like that. Instead, again, there are some parameters on the usage of it for this event overall. Firstly, it's only for this event, so after the 26th, it will be forever locked away, unless there's another event similar to this one, but the Tesla gun will be a weapon that has a chance to spawn in when a zombie is killed in the matches that are played. Not something that you can equip, but instead, it's something that will be match-specific and a limited thing in that sense. So, don't worry, it's not like that clickbait rumor around Black Ops 3 where the ray gun was a DLC weapon in MP and an instant one-shot kill that you could keep playing with forever. Instead, this is more so going to be a somewhat comparison to that of the Venom X being spawnable on the Dome remake from Modern Warfare 3 Unearthed in Ghosts, where it's not gonna play out exactly like that, but it's something very similar, where it's going to be during the match, but something that is not there from the very beginning and something that is not there available to everybody. So it's not as bad as many people may initially think, and it might not be something to get super worried about just yet. Now again, it's not a direct comparison to Unearthed, but that's probably the closest thing that I can convey in the way that it'll be spawned in. But being that it's a limited time mode, obviously we wanna get a whole of that as soon as possible, correct? Well, that's actually why we had the community challenge itself changed around a little bit as well. Because previously the event was listed as killing 3 billion zombies across multiplayer zombies modes, as well as the entirety of zombies in a standalone game mode. And it may have taken a little bit more time, but now with the update for the Weekend Warfare's hotfix yesterday, we ended up seeing that the challenge was also lowered from 3 billion zombies to 2 billion zombies in order to complete it all. So we end up seeing that we'll probably complete this a lot faster. As well, we end up seeing that this is the exact reasoning and logic that Sledge used for the reduction. They wanted to allow players to be able to play around with that limited time Tesla gun for a little bit longer if they choose to play in those modes. So here we are now for that adjustment. 
After that, there was a little bit of a mention of the hotfix itself that went live yesterday, in which it, again, changed a little bit of more technical stuff. There was something like the UI for World War II not displaying the end time properly of the event. There were things with ranked play season three helmets not being distributed properly. There were some different things that, again, were more minor and smaller details. I'll leave the link down there in the description below if you guys want to check that out for yourselves. But it's nothing really too major that I would expect a large majority of the community to really be affected by or that would change any of the gameplay experience. But it was stuff that was again thrown in the mix there for a slight hotfix that they detailed for us in this update. Now the final thing they actually talked about was that of a preview for Horde Point. Starting on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, that will refresh everything for the event and we'll start to see that second week content roll out. One of those big things being the new mode Horde Point. Infected is going to go away, Horde Point is going to replace that as the feature playlist for the week. And this one is actually a lot of fun. It is Hard Point but with zombies coming out at anybody that moves. It doesn't matter if you're on the Hard Point, it doesn't matter if your enemy's on the hard point and it doesn't matter who's shooting at who because essentially whatever moves it's gonna go for it so there are no friendlies it's just randomly mindlessly going after whoever may be in that vicinity so it's a lot of fun again we detailed this here up on the channel on that live stream at sledgehammer the other day it was a lot of fun to do a little preview of that and if you guys check that out well hopefully you guys enjoyed but regardless it was a lot of fun and i think you guys will enjoy it so stick around here for all that the only real other thing also was that we ended up seeing the zombies has a double xp right now as well so that's something that again ties in with the attack of the undead theme that it is zombies coming together with multiplayer so everybody gets a little bit of the piece of the pie with this double xp this week but that said that is really all that we have after that as for what the future holds once again some maybe minor stuff we don't know of at the moment but next week looks to be a lot of fun too within world war ii so that said if you guys are interested in that once again we'll keep you guys updated with all kinds of stuff you need to know here on the channel but that's where we're gonna wrap it up so that was this update that sledgehammer gave us let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below are you guys excited for what we have ahead of us with an attack of the undead are you guys a little impartial or whatever it may be let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below hopefully you guys enjoyed though hopefully you found this insightful and if you guys did make sure you drop a like down below and if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding call of duty world war 2 anything in particular regarding best class setups updates news information all that good stuff we get you covered here up on the channel so if any of that interests you make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing and if you guys want to follow me over on twitter that's the best place to get connected outside of youtube practically live on twitter so if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be link is down there in the description below and if you guys also want to follow over on instagram trying to get more active over there so that link is also in the description below but all that said and out of the way hopefully you guys have a fantastic day thank you all so much for watching my name is espresso take care and peace